Welcome everybody to our press conference for our FA Cup um, game against Liverpool on Sunday. The first section is embargoed until 1.30pm. Uh, let's get going with Simon Pitch. Uh, hi Eric. Um, what is the latest, first of all, with Rasmus Hoyland, Harry Maguire and Aaron Wan-Bissaka? Well, we had a good week. Um, so all the players you mentioned, they returned on the pitch. Um, partly in the start of the week and today we had a session and they were all training. So they're available for... <laughs> um, I think. <laughs> we have tomorrow one session. Where of course, we have to see how they recover uh, from this uh, tomorrow, but uh, it looks uh, good. Is there anybody else back or unavailable? Um, yeah, it's um, so Tom Hitte um, is back as well. Um, also, what very uh, was very good. Uh, Mason Mount trained also whole week uh, with us. First uh, part of the week uh, also partly, but then also we had some uh, full sessions with us. So uh, it's looking good. Eric, are some games bigger than others? I mean, this is a standalone match. It's an FA Cup tie against Manchester United's biggest rivals. Is it the chance to make a statement to show that you can compete? with these teams that you can take them on at home and beat them? Um, it's, uh, yes, some games are bigger than others, that's definitely. And I think Manchester United, Liverpool, that's always a big game, but especially when they score the final FA Cup. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward. Um, it is, it's a special game, absolutely. I mean, what would you say to the fans? Obviously, there'll be a lot of Liverpool fans there because there's bigger away allocation, but it's important that the fans yeah. get behind the team. Yeah, but of course, uh, to the fans, they see it as a, as a very big game and they are very eager uh, for us to win this. And I'm sure they will ride behind us. And uh, as you mentioned, there are more Liverpool fans, so they have to to be really loud uh, to, to, uh, to support us, uh, that we had them. But I'm convinced they will do that. Absolutely. How, um, how important is it that you produce a performance? Because your players all season have been inconsistent. Liverpool have the momentum at the moment. What sort of performance do you need from your players this weekend? Yeah, but I think um, in such, such games, we always achieve very good performances. Um, so, yeah, we had our setbacks, we had our, our lows, definitely. But I don't think um, in any... Um, so really high rated game we had our lows then we were always uh, in top form so and i'm convinced we will be on sunday as well you can't afford a low on sunday can you simple as that you can't oh, if you it. want to if you, if you want to win and we want to win and uh, you play against a good team because then you are you are right they have they are very consistent um yeah, then we need our best to beat them and how impressed have you been with liverpool this season yeah, well, I said they are very, very consistent, and they perform, of course, very well. They, they, they got in the results, and especially I think from, say, around the Christmas into January, February, uh, um, yeah, they play very good football, very good performances, so and very good results. Thank you, Eric. If I just move away from the FA Cup a little bit, the uh, Champions League draw and uh, Europa League draws have just been made. You're obviously not in that competition. Does it does it frustrate you, or does that motivate you to try and reach that goal come the end of the season? Um, of course, it motivates uh, again to be part of that, and yeah, we know why. And so yeah, we analyze that. We left it behind us, we, and so we know the reasons why we are not there. And but we can't change it anymore. And uh, but we want to be part of it next season. So uh, so we will do it and give everything. To achieve this. Hi, um, David Moyes said ahead of this game ten years ago that Liverpool were the favourites coming to Old Trafford. Would you say they're the favourites tomorrow, or would you always be adamant that Manchester United are the favourites in a home game? Oh, it's a difficult one because um, I, I never think about this. For who's favourite? Uh, it's uh, it starts on zero, and make sure uh, we are ready. And I don't think about. The opposition. I respect them. I respect every opposition. Uh, but it's about uh, make it our game, and um, it's about this. Uh, where we know where the strengths are, 
um, but also where the weaknesses are, and it's about that our team is in the best. It's about this. Hi, Eric. Um, it's been a difficult season, obviously, in the Premier League, going out of Europe, injuries you've had. But do you feel that a victory on Sunday could almost be a catalyst and transform the season and give you the momentum to, to maybe push for that Champions League place in the last 10 games as well? Now, what <clears throat> we actually, we never got to turn around <laughs> so far. We had our opportunities, but we, we missed the opportunities. Yeah, Sunday we have um, another good opportunity uh, to, to get the momentum. Uh, and, uh, and I think the, the players, the team, um, uh, showed lately. Uh, I think from January on, we had in, in a very good series of games with a lot of wins. And so they can have the belief they can do it. And now we have to take the momentum. And that is also what I feel when I train with them uh, during uh, and around the games, uh, that they have that uh, belief, they have us, um, uh, so good confidence, a good spirit is in the team, and uh, go and play and get the turnaround, yeah. Chris. Hi, Eric. Um, you said that in general this season you've been quite good in the big games. Some fans weren't happy with the approach to the derby, even though you did score first. Do you think people have to understand and realise that you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams like this and, and hope to win? So it's, it's always about two teams. And so the intention would be never that deep. It was also the game um, when you score first. And uh, of course, then the opponent, the opposition, uh, uh, will take more risk. That is what they did. I think similar, for instance, against Villa. Uh, well, we've had a very good start, and after we scored uh, the first goal, they have to come. And then uh, we know, uh, uh, I think we are very good when there is space in the back of the defending line uh, with our players. And I think we showed against City, uh, um, I think it was really small margins uh, when we should have got that second goal. And even after the first, well, <coughs> after the 1 1, we shoot uh, with Garnacho, we had a great opportunity to make it 2 1. <coughs> And so that was really, uh, really small. And then we could have won this game. And yeah. so uh, that will be also our intention for uh, Sunday. Yeah. We will go and be brave and go forward where it's possible. Right? But also we know uh, when there's space in the back of their defending line and we can explore it. Uh, but we have to get to that point uh, um, to outplay them, to get the balls there. Um, and that, that demands a good strategy uh, in, in the key moments and in the head moments of football. But you've experienced what a Klopp team can do if you, if you, if you open up too much, yeah? I, uh, I know. <laughs> uh, last question in this section, Bob. Hi, Eric. Um, there's been a little bit of speculation about Marcus Rashford's future this week. Um, you've spoken about FFP before. Those rules benefit clubs who sell. Academy graduates. Obviously, Chelsea have, have done something similar. Do you ever envisage a situation where the club might look at Marcus and say that, as part of their overall transfer strategy, it's, it's a positive to sell Marcus because of what it could do to the overall financial situation? Oh, we didn't resign him last season for four years with the intention to, to sell him. No, he should be part of this project. And so uh, that is uh, it's not uh, so a subject. 